Good morning, everyone. It is, that was a little bit of the Superman theme song and Planet Krypton by the, uh, I think it was the Southeastern Trombone Symposium. Oh, that sounded like an NPR <laughs> radio. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, um, it is uh, 7.30 in the morning, 4.20. Oh, my God, it is 4.20. Oh, yeah, there's a joke about that. Uh, 420, April of 2018, last day of the trading week. And let's go ahead and take a peek at alum markets. Man, did we have some awesome, fantastic, amazing moves yesterday. I tell you what, uh, Surprising even me is the absolute weakness of this pound. It is just getting decimated. I was anticipating these moves, but I thought they would play out over a series of, over a couple of weeks at least, not over a couple of days. So, yeah, this has been a pretty fantastic move so far. We might actually have to consider, I don't know if we want to add to these right now, though. That's the issue. Um... Probably not. Mm. Well, anyways, why don't we take a look at our trades from yesterday? Let's bring up the Ichimoku cloud trading that we have been going over. I can take Renko off here. I had Renko on for, I was showing it to somebody the other day. Okay. So, yesterday we had a short on the pound dollar at, oh wow, that is really falling apart. Aren't we, gosh, are we going to visit the 139s today? Man, we very well could. You know what? Let's yeah, let's take a look at the. We'll go through these these trades and come back to the pound. Um, so the pound dollar we wanted to go short at uh, yesterday <laughs> at one forty two thirty one, and very obviously that did work out. Um, that didn't just work out. That worked out amazing. It's not. Very often you get that kind of a trade intraday. Uh, 142.31. Compared to where we are now, we're talking about almost 200 pips of movement right there, guys. That should be a money maker for you. I know in the MAM account we have a, a full lot open on that, and that's uh, we've had that one open since the 17th. And that's three thousand one hundred and ninety some dollars in profit. Makes the sting of getting an earlier last week feel better. <laughs> and I guess we had two targets yesterday. We had shorting right away at one forty two thirty one, and then also shorting at one forty two. Um, you know, I don't don't see a very strong I don't know if there is a trend line here or not I can't remember if there is a long-term one there there may be Oops. I mean, really that's that's the extension that we're probably looking at There it is. Yeah, we're, we're really near it then. But you can bet your goose that that will not hold. I don't know if that'll fall through today, but certainly not interested in taking a short there today. And I might peel off, uh, take the trades off because we might get a bounce uh, look going into next week, weekend maybe, just a just a tech based solely on technicals. Um, 
we'll have to see. So the, yeah, that sh that worked out very nicely yesterday. Let's look at the um, the dollar yen. The dollar yen. We wanted to go long yesterday at one hundred seven thirty seven. That's worked out nicely. We are um, you know about 30, 25 to thirty pips in a profit with that one. New Zealand dollar. We wanted to go short at seventy three oh five and that worked out very nicely we can see where we wanted to go short yesterday was around here was it no 19th where were we around there yeah because we were waiting oh yeah we were waiting for the um oh no 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 that's right we were doing this based off of the we were looking at this with the Kagi chart. That's right. Because we want to go short at a break of this. Okay. Yep. I, I could see. It's a good thing I put the little notes there in the in the trade idea. So 73.05 was kind of where we were talking about breaking down. That was around this zone here. If it price broke down below these shoulders, which it did. And that is the result. So with the Kagi chart, that was a very nice trade and now we are below the cloud very nice very very nice that's a big bar volume bar right there i mean volume is not really a, that big of a deal but i mean it certainly is a big bar there okay let's look at the other ones we had on wrinkle bricks wrinkle 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 and so we had one on the euro dollar. We wanted to go short at one, one twenty three seven. And so that was uh that was when we came back down to, uh, where are we at one twenty three seven. Yeah, that was when we came back down into value here, and we've just kind of had a nice follow through down. And you know we may actually get a nice run on the euro, a nice nice. For run further down here. Um, oh, the Canadian dollar pop up quite a bit. Oh, damn it. It did. Boo. Let me see this. What did I miss out on? Oh, damn it. I just closed that long because <laughs> of a, a big econ data coming up. I should have known. <laughs> ah, that's what happens. Okay, what do we got here? All right, so uh, Euro dollar, that short is working out very nicely. We've got some um, consumer confidence coming out in about an hour and a half. That'll be an important level to watch for. And let's see what else. We also had a short, the same short idea on the pound using Renko yesterday. We wanted to go short at one. 42.31. Um, and then the US Canadian dollar, we wanted to go long at 126. Where are we at there? 126. Um, yeah, we were looking for a return to value here and then a cross back above to form a new bullish brick. And we're getting. Yeah, all of the trades were profitable yesterday. Actually, all of the trades this week have been very, very good. If I do say so myself. Let's look at Monday's trades. On Monday, we'll keep it on rank. On Monday, we wanted to go short at 73.85. So if people were short at 73.85 since Monday, which was the... 16th <clears throat> Yeah, I'll back up here if that closed down Oh, let's bring it back to candlesticks. We weren't using Renko back then yet On the 16th We were wanting to get short at the top of the cloud. And, you know, we have had 
a hundred and fifty pips of profit on that since Monday. Oh wait, actually, no, that's not right. I wasn't here Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> Look at the bomb, Tuesday. No, I was talking about last Monday. Okay, so, well, we don't really have to analyze the pound. We knew what that did because uh, we started shorting at 40, 143. Uh, if you're going to sell a call, Forex Lens guys, sell, <laughs> sell the one that says that we did the short at 143.31 at 7.01 a.m. That was a hell of a call. I'm pretty happy with that. Makes up for the... See, the, the shitty thing is, is, pardon my French, but um, the GAN analysis is so spot on as far as telling you that something is going to happen. It's just there's, there's certainly a variance in both the price action and the, the exact time when it's going to happen. So yesterday, well, or not yesterday, last week was, was, uh, was the right entries at the wrong time. Difficult to quantify. Yet last yes last week's price action was certainly an aberration. It happens. Um, now, long we went started going along at one hundred seven on the on the yen this week. Um, haven't made as much moves there as we have other places, and then we were going short on the euro at one twenty three sixty. Um, not, again, not a whole lot of movement this week here either. We just started to see some bigger moves happen over the last couple days. And then the New Zealand dollar, we, we started shorting that at 73.33. And so we've had great moves in that one. And the Aussie dollar, probably one of the more frustrating trades, but it's worked, worked out very profitably as we started shorting the Aussie dollar at, um, at uh, 77.68. And so really we were looking for a big break of this of this lattice structure angle here uh, is what we were looking for and um if we look at it over here this is the structure we want to have broke and that's what it did now right now it's entering a supportive buying area because we're back on it we got a lot of supportive angles right here um certainly if we fall through this then we should anticipate farther prices but Actually, we might consider taking some type of counter trend trade here. Um, you know, if we look at the daily, you know what? Maybe not because we may be experiencing a fast move down. Disregard. Okay. Maybe we won't take a lot of trades at all today because um, we've had some such big moves in so many places that I really don't want to carry any trades over in the weekend for fear of um, um, some you know wild pullbacks based solely on these really extended technicals. And then we would continue to trade in this direction. I'm talking about all the pairs, not just not just Aussie dollar. Um, Yeah, so we've had some really great trades. Now let's take a look at this pound dollar. Let's 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 take a, a look at this guy. Um, if we go back to the weekly, okay. Oh, we'll look at it over here. On the weekly. This is the activity we've seen, all right? We've seen a pretty strong move up. We have seen a pretty strong general rise and increase in value. And didn't mean to do that.
and we've had some wild divergence, okay? We've had divergence on the composite index, and we've had divergence on the, uh, uh, sorry, the, on the composite index and the RSI. And that bearish divergence, we can tell, is right here, right? I should color those red. And because we've had these rising, we've had those higher highs as we've had lower highs in our oscillators. And the volume has been decreasing. So we should expect to see lower prices. And in fact, probably going to see, I've been saying 138. That's kind of my target zone. Um, because we've had just a nonstop up move. And yeah, it's just been a pretty, well, we did all this analysis concerning the day counts, the seven week uptrend, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is where we're at. 49 days, seven weeks. Gan called that his death zone. And that's when things like to reverse. We can see that back here too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. death moves you can even like consider seven days as well you know if we look at look at how many days one two three four five six seven days ends blow off move that is a blow off move so we're going to find some short-term support more than likely a really around this the one well, 140, 139, 50 zone. If we break this trend line, we'll 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 see some further capitulation in prices. So we should we should really look forward to that. Um, let's take a peek at the do, the euro dollar. So now we're sitting at 123, and now we're actually trading a little lower than that right now. One interesting thing about the euro dollar is that. This is one of the longest and tightest consolidation ranges that we've had ever since January of 2017. Actually, really, we'll take that. I take that back. Uh, that's the tightest consolidation range we've had since the all-time low. And it's the tightest consolidation range we've had since August of 2016 through October of 2016. Okay, so we have a lot of congestion up here. Now, there is some confusion that I'm 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 left with here because I don't like how this is set up right now. On the RSI, we are definitely more in a, a, a selling condition than we are in a neutral, although we're trending back down to neutral. But the composite index is, is pretty accelerating still. Although to be fair, the, the composite index has been higher here for a while. And I, I really just have to kind of brainstorm through here with everybody because when something is in a trend, an uptrend or a downtrend, we will also notice that we can see oscillators treating a certain value area as a support line or a resistance line. And so right now, ever since that all-time low in January of 2017, it appears that this level 35 line here on the composite index has been treated as a sort of, well, we could even say a little higher, not much. Level 40 seems to be a nice support zone on the composite index. <coughs> Notice how when it bounces, so does price. You know, we just kind of see this. But we may fall through that. Or we may find support. Okay? We're at the edge of this wedge. And the confluent zone of this wedge is June 11th. 
and that is uh, about 11 days before the 22nd of June, which is the second most important calendar date in a calendar year in GAN's analysis. And so from June 22nd to July 7th, the, uh, GAN said that this is generally where prices often culminate and that trends will reverse. I'm of the opinion that we are a little too early to show some type of move that would suggest we're culminating. Um, I, I think that's too early. At the same time, I think we're too close to it to have an, in, a, an instance where we would have a technical breakout above to continue an uptrend. You know, using Elliott Wave, we, we certainly have what looks like a, a uh, one, two, three, four, and the fifth leg would have to be pretty small. I mean, this may just be a corrective wave. One, two, three, four. We could see a fifth leg up there. But the, but the fifth wave, I mean, the third cannot be the shortest. So it's, it, it's this is a very hard place for me to analyze to determine where prices are going to go. And so that makes the intraday trade decisions harder when there's no clear idea. Now, we'll, we'll get a clear idea if prices were to break below this angle and break below 121.71 or 121.89. If we break below this, we can consider the, the, the uptrend to be finished for a while. We, can, we, could really, we could really anticipate a large move. To the downside oops a 50% retracement would bring us all the way back down to 144.81 I think that's a little iffy we may only test the top of this cloud here at 117 I think this is more realistic but we have had a, a pretty extended drive up for a while. And there is a bias for prices breaking out. I just don't see that being as big of a bias. I want to do some, if I do some, um, you know, counts here. From this most recent swing high. This, this, don't need this. Here's that most recent swing high. How many days away from that are we? 60 days. Sixty days is not really a a, a time count in Gans analysis. It's not really a, um, a specific kind of time, but we can use that, or we could go. We're approaching maybe ninety days from that previous all-time high, because because there was more. I mean, or how many days from the swing are we? 163. Really not a clear picture there either. So if I can't get a clear idea using GAN's analysis of where we may be ending up at in the short term, um, just got to kind of stick with what's in front of us and we can simplify it. So this is where 
you know, really just using the Ichimoku system is gonna 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 play it play it out. So, you know, it's a good thing to take a peek at the daily. Where are we at with the daily? We are right now below the conversion line and the baseline. The cloud ahead of us is is red. And if you know, if you look at daily charts, when when clouds start to change, it's usually a good idea of where price is going to end up going. It's rarely do we have a zigzag situation on a daily chart. Look at the weekly. We are fairly extended from the baseline here at 120. So we, we, we could see a two to 300 pip drop. Let's take a peek at the hourly. And let's just kind of take a look here. So we've got a good fallout in price. All the conditions are met for a short. Okay, all of the conditions are met for short. Now, if we want to get into this and be short, there's a couple options that we can look at. Probably this is where you want to be a, a, a pullback trader. So we have a couple pullback zones to get in short. So there's a short at a pullback to 123.22 or pullback to, and this is probably going to be the more realistic one because here's the bottom of the cloud and here's the baseline, 123.39. I would expect some type of bounce soon because 40 to 50 pips is, is generally kind of the farthest extension you're going to get from the baseline before you get some type of, you know, uh, normal structural bounce. You, you don't see price extend hundreds of pips on an hourly chart from, from the baseline. It's just not a common thing. Um, but, you know, if we are going to start a, a new downtrend here, we could certainly consider that price is like to bounce off of that baseline or the conversion line right away. Let's look, let's look at our four hour cloud. Oh, beautiful guys, this is nice. Oh man. Yeah, we are uh, on the four hour chart. We're getting, see the lagging span of the four hour charts right here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, so that's right there and we are right below the four hour cloud. We broke below it. That's a big deal, huge deal, huge. And then the eight hour cloud right below that. Yeah, we look to be setting up a brand new bearish structure on the long term, looking at our chart here. Very nice short entry on the hourly. And we are looking at a prob major continuation of that. If we can get a nice breakout below the, well, we do have a breakout below the cloud with the lagging span. The, um, the, uh, The eight hour here, here's the eight hour lagging span. It is below the cloud. And if we look at the four hour, it's not out of the cloud yet, but the one hour is. So yeah, we have great conditions for the short here. Definitely not a, uh, not a bad idea. I just wouldn't enter short now. I'd wait for a pullback. <clears throat> okay. Euro pound. Opposite situation we've got going on here. Uh, this is a choppy trade. This is a really choppy trade. Wow, that is a horrible chart. Check out the pound. It's actually trying to catch a little bit of a little bit of a bounce here. Is what's happening. There may be one. You may consider a, a. I don't know. Well, you know, if this if this bounce doesn't happen, we got to look at it on the five minute chart. There is some desperation to keep this up, but it, I don't think that's going to work, guys. I think if this if that does if that is strong selling. Oh my God. 
that is some strong, firm rejection right there. Oh, my Lanta. Sometimes it is fun to watch this play out on the five minute. Jeez. We'll see. We'll see if there's equal conviction. Yeah, we are looking at a big correction on all these guys. Hmm. Happy we got into them early, folks. Now, the laggard in a lot of these is the dollar yen the dollar yen has not really had much of a move yet of course i say that and now it's just finally kind of starting to move again i tell you if you've got positions short on the euro and the pound and the aussie dollar and all these um maybe peel off a little profit but certainly don't take it all off the table because there's folks there is a big correction going on with a lot of these pairs especially the pound dollar that has been in a 64 week rise a 64 week trend in the pound dollar look at this from this all-time low we have not had a retracement lower I take that back from the all-time low we're 79 bars but if we went from like this we could start from here that's being generous fifty six that is that is a little wild and then we have 49 weeks I'm just kind of sitting here, folks, because we're, we're, we're going to be worried about folks who have been holding and adding to longs up here because it's going to be very, very painful for them. <clears throat> there we go. The dollar yen's finally starting to catch a, catch a bid here. Let's look at the hourly on the dollar yen. Yep, nice, nice jump up here. Now we could see that uh, there may be an opportunity for a long at a breakout above here. So yeah, 107.75 might be a good long opportunity on UJ if you're not in it. It, it's more than likely going to break out from here today. It's it's not going to just do this and not go up. <clears throat> I tell you, the really trolly thing that was happening. Uh, this is, and I feel really bad for for people when this happens because I know it's happened to me, and you know you just hate it. But you know when you see prices going down like this, when they go to like. When prices get to levels like uh, like 90 or 95, things kind of really often, most of the time, in general, will always move up to like touch, you know, the 100, 110, 120 before pulling back. So it's never a really good idea to go counter trend to something that is pushing near that zone. But when it's pushing near and it's, it's not really crossing it. Look at this activity. Here's 124 is right here. And look how long from the 18th all the way to um, yesterday morning. 
they really struggled to push this up to 124. And it didn't hold. I mean, it kept getting rejected, like, just below that. Touched it once, and that was it. And and then we have just this, you know, violent follow-through with price. And we have, you know, we went from 123.90 to 122.90 down here. We've just kind of fallen down 100 pips from there. So that's, that's rough on folks. Especially on, on Euro Bulls who have been used to, you know, a year and a half or longer of, uh, almost a year and a half of just a straight up bull, bull move. <clears throat> you know, but there could be some pausing. There could, this could just be a pause until t for the next bounce because that trend line for that wedge is right down here. So we have to expect some type of supportive activity as we get down to this zone. But if we get lower, we start to test lower here, then we know that that's, that's not going to last for very long. Let's take a peek at gold being very weak. Aussie dollar still showing weakness. New Zealand dollar still showing weakness. Dollar index broke 90. Wow. Look at that. Ooh, I want to look at that on our... Yup. Boom shakalaka. I want to see... this chart oh yeah <laughs> so talking with one of the uh, a friend of mine who's another educator at a at, a, at another place and uh, we were having a, a tissue about um, this level last week and I said yeah it's gonna bounce from here though and it always gonna bounce at 89.25 that's just how I have it drawn this is encouraging that it's blown right through this though I, I mean it's, it hasn't really blown through it we've been testing this pivot forever in a day now it just needs to stay above it that's a good sign though oh man pounds about to throw down again holy cow ooh that's exciting making lower lows again That's broken through that trend line. Oof. The euro is going to have a big throwdown too here, more than likely. Ooh, that is a change of signature. We got some supportive structure here. We'll see if that holds. Well, guys, I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of activity not a lot of trades i'm seeing us enter in for friday because so much of the moves have already happened and we're in some, a lot of them um so looking forward to next week what we can we you know it's going to be odd to see further movement down right away we should expect to see some profit taking and some pullbacks to retrace you know about 50 percent of the move that we've had so far and then that gives us a great opportunity to re-enter those shorts. Because if you remember yesterday, um, when we were talking, um, we wanted to go, sh we took a short on the pound based on a, that pullback to here, okay? If you remember, when the pound caught a bit of a bid and came up here, this is where we went short again. And we went short because, well, you know, that's not only a short based on the structure that this arc t ends up being uh, resistance, but also because we 
if we went from swing to swing, that was right in the 50% retracement zone. It was also the 382 retracement zone on that longer swing. So depending on how you drew it, and it was also the 886 zone. <clears throat> depending on how you drew it, the fib levels were, it was, a, it was a confluence zone of major fib levels, this this arc, and you know, we knew that the trend was gonna keep going down. So where are we gonna enter short again? We're gonna look for another move like this. We want to see a retracement wherever the low ends up being. We want to see a retracement maybe back up to this line. I bet that's where it would go. Uh, this is the hardest line for price to cross below. And it has moved significantly beyond it. That means that we are either experiencing extreme strength on this move, where we may not get a retracement. But if we do, we need to be ready for it. We may see a bounce down here. That is a perfectly normal place to find a bounce here. You know, we're, you know that's that's also just that that whole value of one 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 uh, one forty. What's the euro doing, man? Oh God, that is gorgeous. <clears throat> Now, taking a short on the euro with this kind of a structure here, we can put on our Ichimoku Cloud too. We're looking at You know, probably look at a pull because because this, this, since this is really only the second kind of you haven't had a full retest of this so a pullback to one twenty three nineteen or that twenty two zone that we were talking that makes total sense. Gosh, I can't believe the power in these moves though. This is just fantastic to watch. Uh, when when dollar yen breaks out above here, it's gonna go to 108. Calling it that at 174, we'll have a swift rise to 108, and we may just hold up there. Damn you, damn you, damn you! I missed out. I took profit on the long because we fell through this angle. And we were continuing lower, and I just didn't. I just didn't want to take the risk. You know, I, I took profit on it. Um, I was fine holding it as long as it was ping ponging around here. But uh, we were coming up on some big news, and I uh, uh, just didn't want to give away anymore. So took profit on it, and man, I missed out on an additional seventy pips. <coughs> Shit. I get I get more upset about this stuff than I do about a, a trade going against me. I I know if a trade is going to go against me. I, I plan on that happening when I enter a trade. I know if it's going to go against me. But but I'm fine with that because I worry more about getting in early so I don't miss shit like this. <sighs> because how often are there these kind of a 70 pip moves where when we got into it so early yesterday we had such a drive up and I'm fine holding on to it letting it retrace some do its thing and um, but I mean I followed my rules you know when it broke broke here and uh, um, it didn't close below that line though that's that's the thing so I really didn't follow my rules shame on me uh, irritating we may get a re-entry in here though I mean, definitely we'll get a re-entry because if, if this closes above the pivot, I'm buying back in or if it returns, eh, you know what? The long at a pullback to uh, uh, like 126.80. Strike that.
say 1.269. Dollar yen, 171 pound. Struggling. Euro, gosh, it's still falling. Oh my gosh. We'll see what this does. <laughs> We may get another. I'm going to put in a limit buy up here. Okay. I just put in my uh, limit buy at 107, 74, 75. Now, be be aware that again, as we go closer to the afternoon on this Friday, that we may see some retracing moves on very low volume and in a very, you know, kind of frustratingly. Um, um, ponderous rise counter trend or down counter trend so be aware of that anyways uh, awesome week today folks good trades good market um, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and this Friday they have just been a wonderful wonderful trading week a lot of fun a lot of activity a lot of stuff going on um, again you know People may ask, why did this happen? Well, people will say, well, it's because Jay Carney was dumbish. I think that this is a perfect example and one that if you trade with me and sit, hang out with me enough, I will always say that GAN is right because GAN says that time rules all price movements. Time is the master. And price adjusted and started to move according to this time cycle prior to any big news all right the first thing to happen when a time cycle is met is that price action will start to go in the opposite direction anything that is the first reaction to time is price price is the first thing to react off time the next is human behavior and whether it is you call it panic or news it doesn't matter news and people react to time just as price does we are slaves to it people with with a very secular you know illogical mindset think that sounds insane but it's not Psychology is also very mathematical, and it is hubris to think that you are in control or that humans are in control of, of anything. This is just another one of many great examples of Gans theory being shown to be correct, and that when a time cycle happens and when when there's a collision of various time cycles, changes do happen. And everything else after that is a reaction. If you always wonder, why did price move? Why is this happening? The answer is going to be a time-based answer. Because if you struggle to look at a chart and you try to figure out why is this moving down, why is he dovish, blah, 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 you're going to drive yourself insane. All you need to know is that time is the catalyst for price action it is the true catalyst for trends anyways uh, that is the end of my session and i hope you guys have a great weekend and i look forward to talking with you all again on monday and having another trade week have a good rest of your friday take take off the afternoon like everybody else does don't force trades if you are in profit take it off the table take some off the table if you're in if you're in long profit already you have you're like you're like a 200 pips in profit, don't take it off the table yet. Let, let it run because it's going to run farther. You can always add to it. But if you want to, peel some off. Take your 
roommates, spouse, out for good uh, supper tonight, and uh, yeah, be be happy and thankful with the uh, gains we've made this week, and I'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.